The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. So this is a subject that's really dear to my heart, um, which is physical healing and how God made us to be healthy, not just lurching from healing to healing and doctor's appointments and visits, but God made us so that we could live in divine health, which I firmly believe is where the Lord is getting ready to take the church as a whole. Right. Um, So Dennis and I would like to highly recommend that if you're planning to visit us and attend one of our Thursday healing encounter meetings, that you watch our taped videos for August of 2022. And all these videos are going to be posted and they would be a good preparation. So I um, want to make a couple of recommendations that as God is making us a healed and whole and healthy people, would like to recommend a couple of products. And we have CDs to go with them. There's the Biology of Faith and the Releasing the Divine Healer book. And there's CD sets. There's a Divine Healer course on our online school. And I've asked Rebecca to please put in, we have a healing prayer card with um, how to pray, how to remove barriers to your healing and troubleshooting um, various problems that you might have in receiving your healing. And so if you order these in the next couple of months, we will put one of the prayer cards in there. So now some of the, some of the sets already have the prayer card, but no, no matter what you order, Divine Healer or the Biology of Faith, you'll get a prayer card too. So back in our traveling days, when Dennis and I were doing traveling ministry, something happened on a pretty regular basis. We'd be in meetings and we'd teach you people how to pray through their... Uh, buried wounds and fears and things from the past, many times we would see somebody manifest a physical healing at the same time they would get an emotional healing. And I heard an interesting statistic that Bob Jones was talking, and he was saying, you know, the best of the healing evangelists only have about a 10% success rate of bringing healing to people. And then I heard or read a statistic that approximately 90% of all physical ailments are emotionally based. Think about that. If 90% of all of our physical conditions, physical sicknesses and diseases, are emotionally based. Only 10% of people seem to get physical healings when they go to a meeting where there's a healing evangelist. Maybe if we would start removing the emotional barriers in us, we could see those numbers turn around. Now, I believe that we're on the verge of a super Pentecost and there's going to be a lot, lots of healing. And it's wonderful when God does something sovereign, but we're not helpless infants and we can help ourselves get ready. Um, During our traveling days, we spent winters up in New England. Now, I'm a Florida girl, so... Uh, I didn't know it could get so cold. And, of course, the air would get so dry, and we had to get a 
uh, a humidifier to go in our little cottage where we were staying. And I started getting these rough patches on my skin. And I just thought it was the cold weather and got back where it was warmer and it didn't go away. So I started doing some research on it and it turned out it was a form of eczema. And well, that's an autoimmune condition. So that means there was something in me that was welcoming that. So in our, in my prayer time, Dennis and I were praying. I didn't say anything to him. Oh, I did have uh, a soap that wasn't really a soap that I had put in the shower because it was non-drying. So I had my non-soap soap for my skin. And in prayer time, I said, Lord, where did that come from? See, we're not smart enough to figure out all that's going on inside of us. Uh, a statistic we quote often is that any, in any second of your life, of your conscious life, when you're awake, that you have 2,000 conscious brain processes, pro- processes going on. In that same second, you have 400 billion that you aren't aware of. And most of your conscious thoughts are like, um, this seat is hard, or uh, the air conditioning is blowing on me, or uh, how, how much longer is this going to go on, or, you know, whatever you're thinking. Um, 400 billion. So I was in prayer time, and I said, Lord, where does that come from? Where is this skin condition coming from? And so I saw myself as an elementary school student, and there were some little girls that were popular, and I wanted to be part of their little group, and they didn't want to include me in their group. And so I had taken it, not just the hurt of the rejection, but the thought, there must be something wrong with me. So I forgave those girls. I received forgiveness. I renounced that thought, there must be something wrong with me, and got asked the Lord what the truth was, and over the next couple of weeks, my skin cleared up. And I didn't tell Dennis that I had done that, but he, the Holy Spirit led him to look at that non-soap soap in the shower, and he asked me about it, and he could see my skin had cleared up. That had been hidden inside me for maybe 45 or 50 years before it manifested as a physical condition. How many of those do you have inside you that are manifesting now or will manifest in the future in some physical ailment? That's something to think about. Now, we, when we teach on the emotions and those toxic emotions hidden in us, we stress that to keep those inside you is sin that our unforgiveness is sin. So that's what we encourage when we ask you to to do the 60-day challenge and let the Lord search your heart and get those things cleared up. But this is a more self-serving message because this is how you can become healthier by dealing with those hidden things. So the verse that I was looking at for this morning, we're going to talk a lot about physical um things today, but Third John verse 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The word prosper has to do with everything in your life, that everything in your life um, will go well with you as your soul prospers, but also as your soul, your mind, will, and emotions line up with God or set apart by God, John ties it here to your physical health. And if you look up the word health in the Greek, it really does refer to your physical health. As a matter of fact, God created each one of you to be healthy. 
Of course, we know in the garden with Adam and Eve, before sin entered the picture, they had perfect health. Now, we know that as soon as sin entered, they started feeling negative emotions for the first time instead of the fruit of the Spirit, and they were afraid, they hid, they were angry, they blamed each other, all sorts of negative emotions. And we don't read about it in the Bible, but this was the beginning of sickness and disease for the human race. And it's interesting that until there were toxic emotions, disease was impossible. Now, so God created us for health. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of people who come into this world should be able to live happy and healthy lives based on the physical makeup that God has given us. I mean, we're talking about even in a uh, sin, sin-ridden sin world. Do you know only 2% of all people have a genetic disorder that's caused by one faulty gene? Only 2%. So, and by the way, the last thing I'm going to be talking about is the thing that I'm really, really excited about those genetic conditions cannot manifest until they are triggered by something in the environment. Now, we know that a lot is made, um, a big deal is made about gluten and gluten-free um, products. But did you know that celiac disease, which causes somebody to not be able to tolerate gluten, comes from a faulty gene or faulty set of genes, but it takes something to make that manifest. Somebody could have the gene and not have the disease, in other words. So this is the importance of dealing with our emotions. The diseases that are so common today, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, autoimmune conditions, and there's so many of those, come from four different causes. A complex interaction of multiple genes being expressed. Two, environmental factors such as poisonous substances, for example, the 911 responders, so many of them that from breathing in that air with all those fumes uh, as they were cleaning up the site of 911, a lot of them, uh, the environmental factors cause them to have lung conditions and various ailments. That is not very common, though. But three and four are stress and toxic emotions. Most physical ailments come from stress or toxic emotions. And by the way, you can't be stressed and trusting God at the same time. Now, Dennis talks about stress, which is funny, because you see, stress is actually toxic emotions, too. It's just that Dennis has found that when he talks to men, they find it easier to admit than they're, that they're stressed than they have other toxic emotions, like um, hurt and fear. And by the way, I understand that if... A man has PTSD, which is really just um, a severe issue with fear, that you can't use the word fear. Although PTSD comes from fear, but they just don't, men don't like the word fear when it applies to themselves. So they're, they're under stress, and stress is really emotional distress. So um, in treating patients... Modern Western medicine is designed to treat symptoms but not treat the causes of disease. Now, I understand that the East, Eastern medicine looks more at the causes, but I'll tell you what, that's great, but I've found that not too many people know how to effectively deal with the causes, which are the underlying emotions. And... 
really interesting book. There's a Canadian doctor, Dr. Gabor Mate, who wrote a book that says, that's entitled, When the Body Says No, Understanding the Stress-Disease Connection. And it's a pretty fascinating book. Um, He actually, this is based on his medical practice. He identifies emotional types of people and the diseases that they suffer from so much so that a person with a particular personality type would come into a clinic and the doctors would be able to guess what disease a particular person would be suffering from and it was it's a pretty extreme um pretty extreme book it's I doubt most of us could pick up on what these doctors were picking up on, but the principle is so true. And that our emotional issues could probably be recognizable to somebody like Gabor Mate, who works with um, with patients. He, he talked about uh, very complex things like multiple sclerosis and uh, and Parkinson's patients and even um, melanoma, cancer, various cancers, and the type of patients who would get ill from these diseases. But here's another statistic. And remember, stress is the same thing as emotional distress. Between 75 and 90 percent of all visits to primary care physicians are due to what the patients will call stress, which we know is emotional distress. One thing we need to remember, just like the seed from my skin condition was dormant for all those years, our emotions don't die. They get buried alive. Sickness and disease don't happen in a vacuum. Over the course of a lifetime, our body stores these toxic emotions. And by the way, we can store positive emotions too. And those promote health. And the best news of all for us is now that we know that negative emotions cause disease, we can actively pursue getting healed of them but the thing is we can't figure it out as a matter of fact that is a waste of time if you try to figure yourself out if you're if you're given to doing that stop it it is a waste of brain power it is so complex you are so complex only god knows you in entirety so it's You know, when Jesus talks about coming to him like a little child, just go to him and ask. It would be, let's see, it would be like me sitting down and trying to figure out technology when I can call Jason and say, Jason, I have a problem. Could you come over to the house? But we have direct access to God. Go to him. Stop, stop bruising your brain trying to figure this stuff out. You are not smart enough, I can assure you. Okay. Here's another statement you might want to write down. Our biography becomes our biology. Your life is written in your cells by your emotions. Here's a, here's a good verse for you. If you've been trying to figure yourself out, Psalm 19:12, David said, "Search me, O God, for secret faults." Those things are secret, but God knows where they are. He would say, "God, I don't even know myself." So I'm coming to you and flinging my heart open to you and letting you do the searching. So let's talk about how God made us. When I was writing, releasing the divine healer within, one thing that fascinated me as I started learning about how our physical bodies are made is Moses. 
when he came down from the mountain after being in the glory of God for 40 days, it said he had to cover his face because his skin was shining so much it frightened people. Did you know you were made with the capacity on a cellular level to absorb the glory of God? Let me tell you a little bit about the cells of your body. Your cells are made with a cell membrane, and then you have a cell interior with various organelles, and it's fascinating. If you ever studied the human cell or cells in general, it is the complexity is absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know if you were ever taught this, but when I was, I suppose, in elementary school and we learned something about cells, or maybe it was middle school, um, it was taught that the nucleus of the cell was the brain of the cell, that it ran the show. As it turns out, you could take a cell in a Petri dish and take the nucleus out, and the cell will continue to live. Now, if we took your brain out, you would not be able to live, right? But the cell, now eventually it won't be able to produce proteins it needs to sustain life, and and eventually the cell will get sickly and die, but it doesn't need the nucleus to live. And as a matter of fact, you can take a cell in a Petri dish and introduce, uh, say, salt into the dish or some kind of noxious substance and the cell will try to move away from the noxious substance. So what is directing the cell's activity if not the nucleus? It turns out that the cell membrane is what makes the cell smart. It directly reads the environment and it directs the activity of the cell. So then what is the nucleus? The nucleus is simply the reproductive capacity of the cell, the gonads of the cell. Now here's where it really gets fascinating, and we can learn why Moses' skin began to shine. On the surface of each cell, there are gates and channels. They're called effectors and receptors that can open and close. Psalm 24, open you gates so the king of glory can come in. We also have on our cells what the scientists call energy receptors. Now, what kind of energy do the cells pick up? They, they are picking up spiritual energy that God made each one of the cells in your body with the capacity to recognize him and respond to him. Now, another thing about cells, they respond to emotions. Your emotions are not what just kind of like a a fog or something like that. You read emotions based on tiny molecules of emotion that your cell membrane can read. And you know what your cells do to emotion, good and bad? Those gates will open up and it will take emotional energy into the cell eventually to be expressed by your body. So if you're healthy now, guess what? God made you with the ability to be healthier. And what about that verse where it talks about your youth being renewed like the eagle? I believe that we're in a time of rejuvenation in in the body of believers. We've heard a number of people getting prophetic words about they're going to start being rejuvenated while they sleep at night because God is getting ready to do a great thing in the earth and we need to be healthy to participate in it. You know, recently I I became so grieved 
about what sickness does. It's a, it, it, it destroys people's lives and the burden that it puts on families. And it just really, really grieves me that the devil has done such a number on people. And it's going to take a healthy group of people to participate in all that God's getting ready to do in the days ahead. Okay, let's get back to your physical body. So we talked about one single cell, very smart. However, we're in a community of cells. So our cells have ceded some of their capacity over to a central organizer so we can function as a unified whole with all our systems and organs and everything functioning in unity, kind of like a picture of what God wants in the church. So our body is made of a community of cells, of organs and systems that need to move in sync for good health. Our cells and organs and systems are disrupted by stored negative emotions and eventually manifest as sickness and disease. Now, if you look at it like this, so here is your immune system. Want to talk about how our immune system works. Picture all the systems and organs and everything in your body. It's coordinated by your immune system through your emotions. It's all tied together. Your metabolic system, your cardiovascular system, your digestive system, all your systems, your nervous system, all function by your emotions going through or filtered through your immune system. Now, your emotions, and we talked about that these tiny molecules are the intercom system of our body. So what is being spoken to your body through your emotions? And remember, emotions don't die. They just get buried alive until we apply intentional sanctification to let God search our heart and remove those things that are harmful to us. You can't figure it out, remember, and it doesn't matter if you feel okay now. It took 45 years or so for my skin condition to manifest. So the emotional information stored up over our lifetimes determines our health now and in the future. But what we can do is we can let God touch those areas and wherever God touches an area where there was a negative emotion, now there is a supernatural emotion. God's emotions, the fruit of the Spirit, that's speaking the opposite of sickness and health. Now, I want to talk about the molecules of emotion a little bit more. In 1999, a book came out called the second brain. It was groundbreaking. What this Dr. Michael Gershon had discovered was that we have a second brain. That we not only have our central nervous system, but our gut is a separate nervous system called the enteric nervous system that functions in tandem with our brain. So think of it this way. This is your thinking brain. This is your emotional brain. Now, our enteric nervous system lines our esophagus, our stomach, our intestines, our bowel, bowels, and guess what? Negative emotions directly affect our gut. And you know, there's they make such a big deal about taking probiotics and man managing your gut health and all that. But you know what? You're not managing anything if you don't deal with your emotions. 
actually Michael, Dr. Michael Gershon is now telling about the wonders and importance of forgiveness. He's a gastroenterologist, guys. And he's promoting forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness to deal with diseases of the intestines and the stomach and the esophagus and the bowels. It's of paramount importance. So you can see why your emotions affect your gut health so much because this emotional brain is the first responder for your emotions. Now, the brain in your head and the brain in your gut are connected by a single nerve called the left vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve impacts the part of your thinking brain that has, is the, the emotional center of your thinking brain. However, the brain in your head does not send information down to the brain in your gut. The brain in your gut, your emotional brain, tells the brain in your head how you feel. 90% of the information on the left vagus nerve is going from the gut directly to the brain. Now, big thing that came out in 1999 also was Dr. Candace Pert's book, The Molecules of Emotion. It actually started an explosion of study of the emotions during the decades following. And one thing that's, that's very cute is that doctors started found, finding out about the molecule of emotion for love and bonding and monogamy, which is oxytocin. And these unsaved scientists, after discovering what was happening, they studied one particular little animal, the prairie vole, V-O-L-E, that mated for life. And they discovered that monogamy is a wonderful and health-producing thing. So I thought that was very, very amusing with all they were learning. But Candace Pert, she's a neuroscientist who helped discover a fundamental element of brain chemistry in relation to emotions. She made the amazing discovery that the primary mechanism of cellular change is emotional. From the love of a mother during infancy to the emotional traumas of childhood to the worries of adulthood, everything is remembered by our cells. Emotional memory is stored at the cellular level. The brain can think and remember, but who we truly are, our identity, is a matter of our emotional heart. Our emotions write who we are on our cells. And this is another quote of hers from an article that Dr. Pert wrote. Molecules of emotion are the communication system of the body. They inform all the cells about how we are responding to everything in life. How does this happen? Our emotions are transmitted through our entire body by tiny molecules of emotion called neuropeptides. Our cells read emotional information through the emotion receptors on the cell membrane, the surface of each cell. Emotional information is received into our cells and identity receptors record the changes. Now there are three categories of emotion. If I were a secular scientist, I would say there are two categories of emotions but we are not secular scientists. We are believers in God. In the natural, all emotions are either fear-based or love-based. So all your negative emotions come from the kingdom of fear of the enemy. So we, even an unsaved person can be fairly emotionally well-balanced and they would have a predominance of love-based emotions that have been operating in their life. Most of us are not quite that fortunate and grow up collecting emotional baggage. 
but all is not lost. Now, we were talking about our thinking brain and our emotional brain. Now, this forms a closed feedback loop. That means it just keeps operating automatically, you know, kind of like the way the pancreas um, works with insulin, your food's digested and what's needed is released and then, then it ebbs after you've digested your food and it's a system that works automatically. It's just set in motion and it works all your entire life. Now, your feeling thought loop, again, is a closed system. To change something in the system it takes something breaking into that loop somehow. Well, when we get saved, when we're born again, that's exactly what happens because you have your will operates through the door of your heart. You can open your heart to someone or you can say, nope, nope, I don't want to have anything to do with that person. You can close your heart. Well, you can do the same thing with God. And Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. Now, this is referring to churches in general, except a church building can't open its door to Jesus, right? It takes the individuals opening their hearts to Jesus for him to be welcomed into a church. So you can use that for individuals too. So when you get born again, you open your heart to Jesus and welcome him in. Now, immediately, you have thinking that changes. You have choices that change. Your emotions change. I was told that people out in Texas heard how much I had changed in Tallahassee, Florida, when I got saved. Dennis talks about how he, without even understanding what he was doing and his head was arguing, he immediately went and dumped his pot down the garbage disposal. He made a, new choices, and his brain was saying, you can sell it, you can sell it. But anyway, he didn't. And, and, so, and so that starts the process of change. But God doesn't want just a little bit of our hearts. He wants more and more of us to be set apart for him so as soon as we opened our heart to Jesus God began to flood us with his supernatural emotions the fruit of the spirit now we teach in here that we want to get rid of those negative toxic emotions and each time God touches one of those a supernatural transformation happens and there's more of a deposit of the glory of God in us and you know what your face may not be shining like Moses yet but the potential is certainly there to be filled with that much of God so we begin oh every time we're in prayer and yielding to the Lord he's in the loop He's in the loop and he's changing us. And you cannot be in the presence of God without being changed in some capacity. And that includes you physically. And someday we will be fully glorified individuals, fully changed and permeated and saturated with the glory of God. But right now we're in the process of becoming soaked with God, permeated with God. Now, so, our goal, then, is to stay open to God all the time. Jesus talks about abiding in the vine and living in peace as a lifestyle, walking in Him. And every time you're opened up to God, He's changing you. Spirit, soul, body, all of you. Every part of you is being changed. Now, what can mess that up? Remember we talked about you can't be stressed and trusting God at the same time. So let's talk about what happens with a system that can be greatly misused by us. And this is your HPA axis. This is hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And this is what happens when you go into fight or flight response. And in some cases, it's good. 
that you have that response. Like you've heard about people who lift a car off a child and seem to have almost supernatural strength to do it. That's coming from that burst of energy from the HPA axis. So sometimes that's good. And if you need to run from a lion, it's good that you have an HPA axis that goes into overdrive. So it re- you react to perceived threat. But that response should just be there used in emergency situations. You are not supposed to stay there all the time. And that's what the doctors call stress, is an activated HPA axis that keeps you in at least a low level of stress, if not a high level of stress, most of the time. Now, let me tell you what happens when you live in chronic stress or we talked about stress is really emotional distress, but for the guys, chronic stress. Okay, so your body has two modes. One is growth and health mode, and the other is protection mode. That's when your HPA axis is activated. Now, what happens? Well, lots of things happen. You uh, you have a lot of uh, um, adrenaline and unhealthy energy going on all the time. And the cells that line your blood vessels go into protection mode. And you can't absorb the nutrients that your body needs to be healthy. If you're living in chronic stress, you might as well take your vitamins and supplements and pour them right down the drain because that's what they're going right through you. Very unhealthy way to live. You can't be stressed and trusting God at the same time. So if you feel stressed, what should you do? (gasps) Give it to Jesus and get out of that stress. Now, Let's talk about your immune system and autoimmune diseases. Now, our immune system was made to protect us from outside invaders like viruses and bacteria that uh, an army of little cells would be released when there's an outside invader that goes after, do you know, even your cancers that people get that a healthy immune system will destroy the cancer cells before they can proliferate. So your body is a marvelously protected system. But when you store up judgments like I did, there must be something wrong with me. Eczema, autoimmune disease. My body was trying to destroy me based on the emotional information that I was giving myself. That's autoimmune diseases are all caused by judgments you've made against yourself. And I mean, alopecia, the baldness that some people get, that's an immune disorder. There's an autoimmune hepatitis that affects the liver. Type 1 diabetes, the immune system attacks the pancreas. Rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system attacks many parts of the body, including the joints, the lungs, and eyes. Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, all these things. The immune system has been given the message, destroy this person based on judging yourself and stored negative emotions. Now, the good thing is, and I think for the next few months, we ought to do a divine healing challenge and get serious with God and go after anything that's hurting our health or will hurt our health in the future. I mean, just um, in your daily prayer time, several times a week, Daily, ask the Lord to show you one or two or three, depending on how enthused you are about taking the challenge. 
and let's prepare ourselves to be healthy during this coming move of God. Now, your immune system works ideally by telling germs that they're not part of you, therefore I will destroy you. We should never allow our immune system to go after our own bodies to destroy them. Um, so, I think autoimmune is the most horrible, I think that's the most horrible thing of all. But we know better. So we can go after these messages and remove them. Now, here's another part that I'm about this that I'm particularly excited about is what I was studying and to prepare this uh, releasing the divine healer within. started reading about a new field of biology. It's called epigenetics. Now, how many of us have, have uh, excuse me, how many of us have been told that our genes are our destiny? That if we have certain genes, that we're going to have certain issues and so forth. Well, in the last few decades, they have discovered that genes do not automatically get expressed. As a matter of fact, the field of epigenetics, control above genetics, was based on studying things like nutrition. That there was a famous experiment. That, I mean, this was the classic epigenetic experiment. A group of doctors were studying mice with a genetic condition that caused them to be grossly obese, have um, gen have yellowish colored fur, and prone to bi diabetes and all sorts of conditions that would cause them to die at an early age. So what these doctors started doing, they started feeding the mothers a diet rich in substances that would counteract this genetic information and they were called agouti mice a-g-o-u-t-i because this was the agouti gene that was being activated to cause this um, physical conglomerate and they started feeding these mothers a diet rich in certain nutrients and when they had baby mice, these mice were healthy. They did not get obese. They did, oh, they also got certain cancers. They did not get those cancers that the parents had gotten. And they were slim and healthy and lived to an energetic old age just by changing the nutrition of the mice. You can do images.google.com and you can look up the agouti mice and you can see pictures of the, the parent and the offspring and it's, it's really kind of cool. But this was the famous experiment in epigenetics. Well, that's great in the natural. I mean, it's fascinating. I love, I love to study science and that is absolutely fascinating. Well, we have the epitome of control above genetics. Usually, something has to happen in someone's life to trigger a genetic condition. Well, guys, you know what? That's generational sin. How do you think all these mutations happen? Because there's something that takes place quite often in someone's life that predisposes them to something and it's passed down through generational sin to offspring. Well, I believe that we can turn that around in our lives. Ask the Lord if there's something genetic in your life that's manifested or hasn't manifested. Ask the Lord to show you where that got started. It might have been, um, for example, uh, high blood pressure, pass down the family line from your mother's side, well, guess what? High blood pressure 
has as a root quite often um, anger issues, suppressed anger. So, ask the Lord to show you where maybe you gave in to that and release forgiveness like any generational sin back through the family line and receive forgiveness for taking it in. Now, we know um, based on experience that a lot of times we saw physical healings based on one emotional healing. But often, I call them emotional clusters, like um, kind of like connect the dots. So you have, say, multiple rejection issues in your life. And the Lord shows you that um, when you're praying for physical health and he shows you a rejection issue, well, there might be a series of those before a physical healing will manifest. So it's like connect the dots. So go here and then the Lord takes you here and then here and then here and then here. And all of a sudden a healing manifests. So there could be a single emotional issue or there could be clusters. But the wonderful thing about it is that we were created for health. So this is the time for pursuing that. And so one of the things that I found that I put in the book Divine Healer is that Bill Hammond in his book The Eternal Church writes about this wonderful restorational move that God is going to bring and he uses as an example. He said that often things in the Old Testament are examples for what we can look forward to. He uses um, Enoch as a picture of what eventually is going to happen when the saints are translated. It's called the rapture sometime, but the saints will be... It, was one person in the Old Testament, but will manifest in large numbers in the end times. Okay, he also uses the example of when the Israelites came out of Egypt, that there was not one sick or feeble person among the millions that came out. And he uses this as a, type, as a type of the healing that God is going to bring in the end times. And listen to Tim Sheets and a message the other day. He talked about we are getting ready for a super Pentecost. And he talked about the greater works and the miracles. And Jesus says, you're impressed by these miracles I've done? Well, guess what? You're going to do greater works than these. I believe um, greater in number for sure. Um, greater in, I don't know, maybe we'll, Jesus put a man's ear back on and it grew back to his head. So the creative miracles, I like the idea of the creative miracles, the greater works. So we have access to so much more than we've been utilizing. We've been given so much more than we're utilizing in our personal lives, then we're expressing in our times of ministry at our churches that this is a time of so much more that God is taking us into. So I would encourage us to prosper and be in health as our souls prosper and pursue the intentional sanctification. And so what I would like for us to do this morning is... Dennis, let's, let's pray. Let's go for barriers to our physical healings and pray through some of those right now. Amen. Let's pray through. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just allow you to search our heart. I'm not figuring anything out here. I'm just coming like a little child, humbly, opening my heart for the searching. Search me, O oh God, for secret faults. And like a child, I'll deal with whatever comes up. I receive, receive whatever emotion is attached to what came up. Every thought has a corresponding emotion. Whatever that emotion is, that's not the fruit of the Spirit. It's not peace. It's not love. It's not joy. I receive forgiveness for unknowingly taking it in. Knowingly or unknowingly taking it in. 
And when I receive forgiveness down in my Bible heart, the door open and yielded and welcoming the forgiver who lives in me to wash it out, it changes to peace. There must be a supernatural exchange. Knowing that when I feel peace on any area of forgiveness, whether I'm receiving forgiveness, releasing forgiveness, that that peace remains in me, set apart by God. Would anybody be interested in coming up and praying through something and giving us a little bit of information? Anybody want to get prayer and brave enough to get prayer while the camera's on? It will help people. I won't do anything that will embarrass you. We'll, we'll get it. And only say what you can say, you know. But it's very important for people to see how easy it is to go to Jesus. And not Jesus far away in heaven, but the Jesus in your heart. Okay, just close your eyes. And did you have something come up already? Okay, can you say it out loud? Um, I really don't know what it was, but it was, it was kind of green and it was a lot of fear. That's all I know. That's all you have to do. Okay, yeah. then the fear. Let's ask for a little bit more clarity because it's always attached to a person or a situation. What's the person or situation? It's my mom and my dad. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what's the feeling? Uh, fear of punishment. Fear of punishment. By the way, that's uh, why we have forgiveness from Jesus. I receive forgiveness. There you go. She just did it. Changed the peace. I receive forgiveness for taking in that fear, the fear of punishment. And I release forgiveness to them, mm. which is flowing out of her like a river right now, just discerning her human spirit. It's that easy, and it's that easy for every, whosoever will. Very good. You pray through another one? <laughs> Wherever well, you want to go, go Jesus. Okay. okay, close your eyes. First person or situation that you see up here, say it out loud. My sister. Your sister. And right down here is the corresponding emotion. Every thought has a corresponding emotion. What's the emotion? It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. That's good enough. We don't all have. It can be, that could be hurt. That could be yuck. I've had them say numb. It doesn't much matter until you develop it. But what, what you do know is that's not helping you. That's not the fruit of the spirit, is it? Mm. So I let a river of forgiveness go to... There, you just did it to my sister. Wow. Wow, that's a nice anointing when you release forgiveness. This is why the Bible says you shall love, uh, pray for your enemies. Bless them that curse you. It's not what it's doing for them. It's setting you free. I receive forgiveness. Now, this is drinking it in. I receive forgiveness for taking it in. See, someone can reject you, they can be angry with you, but you have a responsibility. You don't have to take it in. You don't have to own it. Evil or negativity wants to make a connection. It has to get your permission to own it. And once you own it, it's coming out of your life. It's going to be the expression of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Amen. You may be seated. I want to give you that... Through the cross, what Jesus gave was propitiation, big fancy word for forgiveness. 
a lie that even seasoned Christians still believe. Every now and then you run into it. Is those who fail deserve to be punished, including me. So you cooperated with that whether you knew it or not. Nobody likes being the victim, but if you take it in, you become a victim. The trouble with becoming a victim is that you, in turn, will be a perpetrator. And you'll, you'll find somebody to target and pick on them, too. If not that person, you'll find somebody else. It's not nice to hate mommy or daddy, so you go kick the dog. You know, <laughs> you will find a target. Right? So, Father, we just thank you that you who began a good work will continue it. And I hope it was on the, the video that, including this one, all four messages in the month of August, we're going to have people coming for Thursday night, emotional healing, deliverance uh, sessions, encounters, and they'll be doing uh, road trips to get here. Uh, we will not stream it. Could you see how awkward it is for someone to come up and say what they said? But yet it helps multitudes. It helps multitudes. And remember, it's not about what they did. Forgiveness was the most beautiful thing that God ever gave us. We should be the most forgiving people on the face of the earth. But that includes forgiving yourself. So here's, here's four areas of the cross. We'll close with this. That See if you fall into this category because then you've got some emotional unhealth in you. First of all, there's justification. Justification says, I must perform to a certain standard in order to feel good about myself. If you have that, you've just violated the cross. You have a different standard. Does that make sense? And you know what your fear is? You're afraid of failing. So you've exalted performance, and you're actually taking God's part. You're not trusting him. You're trying harder. So by justification, justification Jesus removed that. Jesus removed that. I mean, let's face it. I want my life to be, I don't want unnecessary hardship. There's trials and tribulations in this world, but he said, be a good cheer, I've overcome. I want to be in the overcoming knowing there's trials and tribulations, but I don't want to live in unnecessary trials and tribulation, right? Then you hate that word, unnecessary trials and tribulations. But forgiveness will provide the solution to that. That's justification. Then you have reconciliation. And this is one that uh, we see showing up on, on, on Tuesdays and uh, Thursdays, particularly Thursdays. And that's reconciliation. All right. Too many Christians identify with something. They say, that's me, because they have a history of it. Your history does not determine who you are. God does. Reconciliation. Reconciliation is that there's no room for rejection. You have acceptance in him. Accept yourself from his point of view. Reconciliation is I am accepted in the beloved, and you cannot, uh, here's the lie. The lie for reconciliation would be, I must have the approval of certain people to feel good about me. If that's the case, that's idolatry. You don't need the approval of certain other people. You need God's approval. You get God's approval, you get healthy. That's the second element of the cross. We have justification, reconciliation, and here's the one that Connie just went through, propitiation. Propitiation is forgiveness. Only God can forgive sin, but then he tells you you have to forgive, so that means you and God have to do the forgiving from the heart. Now, Propitiation, the lie there is, I, those who fail deserve to be punished. She had a fear of punishment. Those who fail deserve to be punished, including me. As a matter of fact, I can remember uh, uh, kids that if they did something bad, the parents didn't even know they did bad, they'd go in their room and punish themselves. Yeah. But they're going to live with this fear of punishment then because they've chosen to be judge, jury, and executioner to themselves. That's not free. That's not free living Christianity to where you're enjoying the acceptance that God had. You are accepted in the beloved. And then the third one is, um, is uh, <clears throat> the one that I had to deal with initially as a young believer, and that was dealing with shame. 
and and shame had to do with regeneration or easier way to say this I am what I am by the grace of God that means the real me is from God's perspective not from my own making my own personality that I say well I this or like Jennifer did uh, I don't fit in what the rest of the girls don't want to want me to be part of their little group so there must be something wrong with me that's shame and the shame based has to be broken and it was broken by regeneration God said you are what you are by the grace of God grace meaning I've given you the ability to be and to do all that you've ever been called to be and all that you ever called to do don't take on somebody else's image I don't care if it's your mother your father your friend or yourself and we have found the enemy a lot of times it's itself who puts these images on us that are come against the new creation reality so these people are coming for road trips do you see those four elements? And I am what I am by the grace of God, and I like me. If you can't say that without feeling yuck, get rid of the yuck, because it's true. You're accepted in the beloved, and you are what you are by the grace of God. So any other identity is a false personality and needs to go. Okay? So if uh, we're recommending, and I think it was on the tape, I wanted Jennifer to make it in the beginning, if anybody's doing a road trip, we got people coming from Colorado, Missouri, uh, Virginia, uh, other places. And if you're coming, I would go through the last four messages. This is a lot to absorb, but if you want to see people getting healed, I don't want uh, one person out of 200 get a physical healing real dramatically. That's nice. One out of 200. That's nice for the one. I want all of us to participate at such a level that I'm going to make it as easy as possible for God to bring healing to me. I'm going to cooperate. It says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. What we saw when we traveled is there's a whole lot of people do not want to apply effort. They'll, they'll, they'll go to a meeting hoping that they just get a healing and someone lays hands on them and they're done with very little effort on their part. God says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. All your heart is not a casual walk in the park. All your heart means there's something that God is looking for in you as far as to what level are you hungering and thirsting after me? Because then I'll be found by you. It's time to find, Jennifer says. The word of the Lord was, it's time to find. But you have to search for me with all your heart. I will be found by it's you. It's intentional sanctification. Intentional sanctification. All those places with negative emotions, that's uh, your sin if you hold on to them and don't get rid of yeah. them. I'll tell you who so, doesn't get a lot of ministry and they can be in church 30, 40 years are the ones that go, I already dealt with everything. Or I dealt with almost everything. Intentional sanctification says, how about humble yourself like David and says, search me, O oh God, for secret faults. I've got... 2,000 thought patterns going on here any second. That's not as reliable. 400 billion in the non-conscious. I think you don't know everything. I think we should ask God to search our heart and let him pick the cherries. You agree? You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.